Listening to a fella, hmm? that I almost forgot okay. it, was, it was it was three o'clock. Can I hear you in the background? They're welcome, boys. They're welcome. Hey man, how's it going, man? Yeah, very, very well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. I really, really, really appreciate this. Um, hey, I, 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 remember, I remember all the conversations that led to this, and uh, it's just amazing how you continue to remain consistent. Um, in ensuring that uh, the young creatives all over Nigeria continue to uh, up their game, you know, and remain uh, relevant in the industry. And somebody was asking a question just now, which, which I'm going to talk about at the end. You know, was asking why is it that successful creatives find it difficult to carry the younger ones along? You know, I just dropped that question. We're going to we're going to keep on that towards the end, you know, of the conversation. So uh, yeah. thank you. But I want to, I want to introduce you to our guest. You know, uh, uh, when I was doing this post, it seems like most of our guests don't really uh, understand the depth, you know, to yeah. which your passion, you know, uh-huh. to which your passion dream in about uh, creatives in Nigeria. And yeah. so I want to give you really, really brief bio, you know, uh-huh. for really get to know who you are. So, yeah. uh, Oye, Oye Ubanatu is one of Africa's best strategic event producer, content creator, creative entrepreneur, and cinematographer. Some of his productions include the famous Worry Again. You know, uh, let, me uh, just, let, me, let me let me let me stop here again. <laughs> I used to hear Worry Again, Worry Again, Worry Again. I never really knew you as a producer up about two years ago when yeah. I started to follow up on Instagram. And I started to see the, 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 the enormous work you put in behind the scenes to ensure that that event comes out fantastic. And then yeah. I remember when I talked with you, when I walked with you at the Worry Edition, that was a fantastic experience for me that I can never, Wait, ever what, forget. What, what month was that? I think that was in October last year. Yeah, October, October last, last year. year. Ah, yeah, 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 I guess. Yeah. I guess. October last year. So uh, some of uh, Mr. Oye's production is going to be famous already again, our Google Fishing Festival. You know, when I watch how you shoot, how you produce our Google, it kind of makes me uh, wonder, how do you take some of these uh, jobs and transform the whole, you, 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 you transform the story, you, you make people see, see it differently. I mean, a fishing festival, but when I see all the effort you put into it and I see the content that comes out of it, I begin to wonder, is this really a fishing festival? <laughs> you know, so it just shows yeah. your depth. And then there's alternate sound, and then there is uh, the SEO uh, NFF award, and all of that. Uh, Mr. Oye is an NEC ambassador, a public speaker, and lining events such as the annual Lagos Social Media Week, the Event Experience Africa, and numerous status platforms. Oye has an undying passion to mentor the next generation of African creative entrepreneurs to achieve success by continuously sharing from his world of experience. Your name rings a bell in Lagos, Nigeria, where you operate. Touching lives, yeah. creative niche across Africa, and you continue to inspire African creatives to increase your value, to raise the bar, and to position themselves for global opportunities. Mm. Thank you so much for joining us once again, sir. It's a great wow. privilege and a great manifest platform with you. <laughs> Honestly, you know, p- people ask me, the, you know, a lot of time why you wear a hat. Let me tell you guys one of the reasons why I wear a hat. I really do not know how to handle all of these compliments and things. So, you know, like whenever people talk about things like this, my head just tends to swell. Like right now, I can feel my head swell. So, you know, I think I should just, you know, so that way I can like put it together. But, you know, today I, w- I want to do this without a hat on. Um, but, but thank you so much. It's, it's very humbling to actually just listen to you uh, list out some of these things. Um, this is a shocking fact about me. Um, when it comes to 
my work. I am one of the, I'm maybe the few persons that really do not know how to do so much, you know, talking about my work. I like my work to speak for itself. And because I live by philosophy that says, I am as good as the last job that I did. You know, it's really not about the job I did three years ago, 10 years ago. You know, it's it's about the, the very last one. So um, it's a great honor to just listen to this. As a matter of fact, I'm even inspired by what you just you just said. After this, now I'm going to Google this guy and be like, yo, man, like, like bro, man, you got to mentor me, man. Like, <laughs> you know, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and, and big, a big shout out to everybody. Everybody in here right now, I can see the numbers are going up. Right now we're at 28, and I can see yeah. people joining yeah. in. Arinola Thompson, wow, wow, wow. I'm seeing, like, amazing people on my page, and also I think your page as well. Now, guys, everybody here right now, do share your ship. Yeah! See, there's, there's, there's uh, share, shop, share shop ship from the U.S. here right now. That's B. And his great team, this yeah, yeah, exactly. Calivante, my darling. Now, see, everybody, everybody here right now, do us a favor. If you look down on your IG thing, you see that triangular arrow. Do us a favor, click that. It's gonna share to you know a couple of people. Feel free to just bring in a couple of more people in here because what we're gonna talk about is really not just for content creators. I mean, like the topic that. Uh, my Oga right now has given to me, you know, to talk about, you know, it, that, that is, it, it, it's not going to be for just content creators. So do us a favor, just share it and let's get more people in the room so we can share this, you know. So yes, Mr. Caro, I, I know your wife is there right now. Your wife is, your wife is the manager of this IG life. True or true? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. 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 So let's get this going. All right. All right, so let's go. Let, let's go, everybody. Um, so, leading to our conversation, um, that led to this uh, uh, Instagram uh, live video. What yes. does diversification mean to you when you say uh, diversifying? What does mm. what does mm. it mean to diversify? You know, I mean, it's it's a simple term. To to diversify, to diversify means to be diverse, and to be diverse simply means you know just basically you know, having options, right? Or going, going, just, let me put it this way, go to work on the options that you have created that works, right? So when we say diversify, we mean you have this one that is working, you need to move and expand that into other things. And in most cases, you know, especially in the business that we're in, content creation, I'll give you a typical example. If, I, if, if I'm a photographer, and I literally built my photography career doing documentary photography, and I make money from maybe like exhibitions or things like that. Now, if I want to then diversify, I can diversify into building communication materials for NGOs and things, or I can decide to say I partner with wedding photographers and say, okay, you have this wedding job, you're gonna do, you're gonna cover the event. How about I partner with you or I work for you and then I do the documentary story part of, or rather I tell the story of these couples away from the wedding events. You see what I mean? So that way this photographer going like a, like three, four, five days before and some days after and then creates like nice visual storytelling of these couples. That's one of them. I'm a photographer. Um, I do weddings. You know, I can then say, okay, you know what? Um, I can diversify from just doing weddings into doing product photography for companies in the value chain of wedding. For example, um, food, right? Food is like a common thing in every wedding. So I can decide to say, okay, you know what? I want to, I want to add food photography to what I do, you know, and that way I can sell this to maybe restaurants or food delivery businesses, you know, just to say, guys, um, I know you need to communicate to your, to your audience so I can actually photograph, I can do a couple of foods and stuff for you, send it to you. You can use that on your social media play, uh, pages to advertise and then we can push it up for them. So diversifying means to simply just act on other areas that are within or maybe outside your business scopes that works. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, so 
Uh, there, there is a, there's a lot of worry, there's a lot of anxiety right now, yeah. you know, uh, in the industry. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of business models have been you know, disrupted, and so many photographers are so scared, they don't know what the future holds. You know, as government continues to talk about social distancing, you know, yeah, what stay indoors. The more, <laughs> stay indoors, you know. So the more we hear all of these things, the more scary, you know, and sometimes it, it don't lose our friends creativity. You know, so how can creatives manage all of these and more challenging processes that may even come up as we progress into the future? Mm, mm, mm. Well, to be very honest, and you're right, it's nobody saw, well, the majority didn't see the pandemic coming. And um, um, we're here, we're here. But there's something, there's something that I say. And I'm very okay. I'm not worried. You know, yes, I'm concerned, you know, for a lot of people. And also, sometimes I find myself thinking about what the future holds, not for just my industry or my business, but for the world in general. Because, you know, our kids are going to grow into this world, right? And we are going to adapt into a lot of the changes that has come and then will continue to come, you know. Um, but you see, first, I'm, I'm just going to say um, a big condolence to anybody who has lost uh, someone to, you know, uh, the coronavirus. Or if you know anybody or you have friends or anybody who's lost, you know, it's quite scary to see these things happening. And then you're like, yo, you know, you, you, you want to be as careful as possible. And then with all the business shut down, I know there are a couple of people who had bookings, you know, like wedding bookings, like five, ten, three, two, and then just a few weeks or months down, boom, clients are calling to cancel. And you know how it is for you to, you know, let's say your rent is due in September and then you've calculated those amount of money or some people might even, you know, collected properties, you know, knowing that they're going to pay at a particular time and then boom. This can really cause you to be worried or, you know, somewhat uh, very depressed or whatever business that you're in. But you see, this is what I always tell myself. We are not alive today by mistake or by chance. And that's a fact. And one thing I know for sure is God does not make mistake. If God knows say. This period no go favor me eh? if I allow me to come like 13 BC or maybe you know maybe another 40 years from now. Do you understand what I mean? So you see, the fact that I'm alive yeah. to witness this, um, I you know it's it's funny when I when I find myself saying we're 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 alive to witness this amazing time in, in history. It's sad to say that people are dying, you know, um, but it's just seeing how. Like this, the world can shut down, then teaches you to say, look, there is there is something in this whole pandemic. There's something this pandemic is teaching me as a human being first, you know, without even talking about your business as a human being first. And for me, here's the thing. This pandemic will come and go. You and I, we've never seen a pandemic before. Ebola are not a pandemic now. You know, you know, the, if, you, if you go back, if you go, let's say if you go to YouTube now and read up the influenza and, you know, all of that stuff, that people were dying from just inhaling air from their window, right? Now, that's a pandemic. You and I, we've never seen that sort of pandemic on a global scale where the world shuts down, you know, at once, right? So, understand this. No matter how... F- you know, um, no matter how afraid you are or how, you know, fear of tomorrow or the future or for your business, for your life, for your family, no matter how the fear must have gotten over you, please understand something, that God does not make mistakes, irrespective of your religion. Just understand that God does not make mistakes. You know, for the fact that we are alive, it means that there's something great. And by that miraculous twist, you are here listening to this conversation right now, and I'm here saying or sharing this with you. It simply means that, wait a minute, this is not the end of the world. This is not the end of business. This is not the end of opportunities. And that's how I see it, really. So what I'm going to say to everybody is, guys, hmm? this pandemic will come and go. 
The most important thing is, please make sure you're safe, right? Do everything you can to keep yourself safe because we are going to transit into a high level of opportunities for people. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give you a typical example, Carol. Um, my barber came to cut my hair yesterday, two days ago, right? This guy charges, you know, I think about a thousand or so to cut my hair. And then I was having conversations with him. I'm like, so what, how is the business like for you? Blah, blah, blah. Dude is like, I'm okay. He was just smiling and happy. I was like, what, how, what do you mean? I'm just like, well, I do more home delivery. I do more home service now. So I was like, eh. Hey. So you know, now nah, this home service you do for me now. You don't go carry a He said that when he tried it for me, like when he started it with me some months back, but I think about a year ago, you know, that gave him the confidence that he can actually go to people's houses and actually cut their hair. So when this pandemic now started, he started telling his customers that I can actually come to your house. As a matter of fact, I have my own mask. You know, and so I can come to your house. And I was like, oh, wow. So I was like, so how much do you charge? Now, guess how much this guy is charging to cut hair? He's charging 3K. How does a baba go from a thousand naira to three thousand naira? naira. So, while you are there, afraid, saying that, ah, you know, and stuff, and you are, you are allowing that get to you, somebody's making money. What that tells me is this, eh? There's a lot of opportunities for the downstream for people at the downstream of the economy. And that's you and I. And that's the truth. That's the truth. Companies are firing people. Guess what? People are hiring freelancers. You see what I mean? So, again, understand that this pandemic will come and go. What you then need to focus on is, number one, what is this teaching me right now? You know, what, what is this pandemic revealing to me right now? And also, um, I need to focus on being safe. So master what it is to, you know, not get the virus, keep your immune system high, and then focus on the tons of opportunity, which, of course, we're going to discuss now for content creators and people who aren't content creators. So people, a lot of everyday men, Carol, I spend, I spend a minimum of four hours on mentorship sessions every day. And these are not just like people in the industry. My clients, my clients are sending people that they have sacked you see what I mean? Like my client, mm. people, the mm. companies that are firing mm. their staff, they're sending them to me to say, oh, you need to be friends with this guy. You need to have conversations with this guy. You're very skillful in this area. And, and by the time you talk to this guy, he will be able to point you in some other things. As a matter of fact, we work with him. You know him already. So you guys can actually continue working. And I'm like, yo. So I spend more time, you know, mentoring people, talking about the importance of a pandemic season you know, and how well we can maximize. So again, before we go further, and I want to say a big thank you to all of you joining in. I just saw uh, officially Omotayo. I, I think it was you I just saw now. So welcome. So again, this pandemic will come and it will go. But don't let this pandemic come and go again. Again, you won't go start on starting. So there are things that you can focus on right now that's going to mean well for you now and then your future going. Uh, uh, but going forward, let's talk about uh, content creators who make yes. money in weekly gig, you know, um, weekly events, uh, weddings, uh, birthdays, anniversaries, funerals, you know, any event you can think of. Yes. Uh, what such content creators do? Uh, let's narrow it down to photographers and videographers now. Mm. Uh, what mm. can they do right now, you know, building to build a profitable brand for themselves and yeah. their business. And mm -hmm. how can they use the information you want to share now to position themselves for the future? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 it's really important to ask this question. And, you know, I really, I really when, when this whole lockdown thing started, right, the industry that I, I was worried for the most was, you know, content creators in the wedding and, you know, those, you know, those weekend event spaces. Because a lot of, a lot of con content creators who even do like documentaries and things, they pay their bills and feed themselves from these sort of weekly events, right? Um, for some of us who are very daring enough that capitalizes on projects, right? But these are people who actually do these things from um, money that they make, you know, every weekend. And thanks to mm -hmm. the wedding that is, you know, that has become a major industry in Nigeria, right? 
Now, when this happened, it's sort of like yeah. just, you know, um, and, and then again, most of my mentees that kept reaching out to me, kept reaching out to me, you know, um, those who are like into weddings to say, man, Baba, I, don't, I really don't know what to do because now I'm at home and I'm looking at my equipment and things. People are not getting married. My, like this guy told me that he had four bookings and the client call, clients called the same week to cancel all four. Not postpone, cancel, you know. Now, okay. that in itself is quite heavy. But here's the thing. This one thing I keep telling each and every one of them to say, don't lose hope. And that's why I'm really excited about this topic, which is diversifying. Here's what you can do. Again, like I rightly mentioned, pandemic seasons are, pandemic seasons or times like this where you have economic me meltdown or, you know, recession and things, from what I know, I read a lot, I have conversations with people at that level. One thing I know for sure is a time like this gives birth to a new time, right? And trying times, every trying times in life comes to ask you one question. Are you prepared for the next level of your life? I'll give you a typical example. One of the reasons I'm not worried about whether the pandemic or crash or lockdown or stuff, you know, Carol, you know, I had an accident while I was working, you know, and then I was on wheelchair, I was bedridden for close to a year, right? And that period of my life taught me the power of resilience. Taught me, you know, because in those moments, I had to review my business. And I said to myself that way, so my business will not move. If something happens to my leg, I was like, no, 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 no. Now, I have made transitions. I don't do weddings. You know, I do, I do project based. And, um, you know, I have a team that I've trained and I've mentored a couple of people that, I, that we work with on network base. Now, these things came from the idea of knowing that if my business constantly revolves around me alone, then that business is not sustainable. You see what I mean? Now, a season like this or a pandemic season like this or a recession period like this comes to say that, look, hold up. If your business is going in one direction, now this has happened. Government just woke up one day and said, everybody stay at home. Now we're staying at home and then you realize that now I can no longer eat. Why? Because I can't go out. Wow. Then you need to review your business. You see what I mean? So people who are in the wedding space, photographers, videographers, now you see some of, some of this, some of the principles that I'm talking about right now can be applicable in all the business, can apply in all the business, right? So if you're um, a wedding photographer, wedding videographer, this is what you can do right now. Look into your value chain. See, a wedding has like five basic stuff. As it concerns content creators, can we can we can we quickly dive can we quickly dive into that? Because um, from my research, majority of the people, uh, photographers, especially from where where I come from, my my yes. day, sorry to sorry to call to you, you know, That's deal good. with weddings and weekend events. So can we mm -hmm. can we quickly uh, break down like a tree to break down the value chain for these guys to really understand? Because some of us are may not yet fully appreciate the other value chains yet. Mm, absolutely. Continue. Absolutely. Now, some of the value chains, right, are this. You are a wedding photographer or a videographer. When you go, when you pick up a wedding job, what are like the top five, top ten things you will always see? The top ten people, other vendors you will always meet. Those are value chains in that wedding space. You see what I mean? Mm. So, for example, there is always a wedding gown. Mm. Somebody made the wedding gown, right? What else? You know, you guys can comment all the yeah. all the value chains in in the wedding industry. There's the wedding gown. There's always a wedding gown, right? Except for those very bougie, creative people who just says, "Oh, we're not doing wedding dresses. We're doing something." Else. But there's always a dress, a wedding gown. There's always a suit. There's always the ring, right? There's always that shoe, right? There's food. There's flowers. You know. Now here's the thing: photographers, photographers, uh, videographers, photographers. You can bear me witness to this. When you go for these events, right, or when you get the job and you go for meetings, there are MCs as well, right? When you go for these meetings, you meet these other people, right? And then when you take up the job, 
you know, like when you watch these weddings, right? You you find this very opening, beautiful montage of the shoes, the rings, the food, the flowers. You know, a lot of people do these things, right? And then they have them, the makeup artists, they do like this very nice stuff. So guess what? Those are value chains. But what you're simply doing is documenting this entire thing and the wedding. Now is the time to string out all of these value chains and find a perfect way to collaborate with these guys in telling their stories. Stop for a second, guys. Do you know since the lockdown and now we've had over, we've had weddings in thousands. Guess what? People are getting married online. True or false? I have been watching a lot of all these online weddings and I, I'm fascinated by it. Like, so if, no, 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 Carol, if they tell you people will marry online, you'll believe. So I'm fascinated <laughs> by the fact that this is happening in this very moment and time in history. I'm like, wow, I'm really blessed to actually witness this. So guess what? If people are still getting married, meaning there are other businesses and value chains that are moving. One that I saw, the, 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 the bride's sister was a photographer and she was taking pictures with her, with her iPhone. And then they set up computers and things. No, they set up a computer and then all their friends and family members, you know, just participated, you know, online. But guess what? There were things that were still constant in that digital or virtual wedding. The lady wore her wedding gown. The guy wore a suit. They had a ring. They had a shoe. She had her shoes on. You know, they had. She had a flower bouquet. And funny enough, when it was time to even throw the flower, she threw it to the laptop. You know, or the, the camera that was. You know, and it was funny. Oh, it, it was. It was beautiful, guys. Like, you can check this stuff online. They're beautiful to watch. So guess what, dear photographer, now is the time go into your portfolio if you've done like 20 weddings like there's a guy in Benin that I know very well uh, uh, what's his name ING Films um, uh, what's, what's his name ING ING that's my boss ING told yeah, you, know, you know now he, he he's been shooting fantastic weddings a couple of them in Lagos as well you know you have the likes of Chidi uh, Odukoya in Lagos you know a couple of other people go to your your archive you will have you'll find tons of wedding rings tons of wedding shoes tons of stylized fantastic wedding gowns that you've shot right if these people are still selling now is the time to diversify by you know editing some of these pictures or rings or stuff if you're a video person just do like a nice clean 30 seconds montage of these rings or the shoes or the gown and Try to find these guys. And now, right now, you're not limited to your immediate environment, right? The whole idea of digital platform just expands the whole opportunities for everybody. So now is the time to connect to, you know, people who are in vendors who are selling gowns, vendors who are selling, collaborate with these guys, and then start sending them this material to say, yo, you know, um, I can create like nice marketing videos for you that you can use to sell, you know, your products. Since people are still getting married, virtually and using this stuff and guess what they will gladly collaborate with you and then a lot of them will gladly pay you money you know to do this thing so here's the thing now is the time to go into your archive to see a lot of product work that you have that you can use to create another market for yourself and i think that can bring a lot of income another one you can do is food you know you can get creative in your own space by photographing food Every wedding photographer, wedding videographer, you have photographs like tons of foods in your life. We're doing all these all these events. So you're used to that. So now is the time to get creative in your space, you know, to just do like a couple of product photography for restaurants. You know, because right now, Carol, and for everybody that's watching, you know this, restaurants aren't open. Right. So restaurants are doing the same thing. They are diversifying their own business. They're going into food deliveries and stuff. See. For you to experience a restaurant, you have to literally go there to eat, feel, and, you know, just experience the environment. For you to say, oh, Carol, let's have a meeting there, eh? and let's have it at Ah, man, you like this, their food, you like their, you like their decor, it's, the, the space is very creative and stuff, right? But now that's, that isn't happening anymore. So restaurants yeah. are right now looking for people that can help them communicate their brand messages in terms of, oh, guys, so... 
we are still open for business, so we are selling mm. for you, you know. So who's going to do that? The photographers, the videographers, the content creators. So while you're there, disturbing yourself, feeling yourself with worry, fear, and anxiety, people are there cashing out by diversifying. So in summary, now is the time to go into your portfolio and look at all those pro product photography and, and video content that you shot in the past, turn those things into marketing um, materials, and then the last one, collaborate with people to say, look, I can do this, I can help you tell your visual stories. Now that people are at home, we can help you sell your brand message through visuals and that, and you'll be amazed. Between now and the next three, four months, if you're consistent, you will see, guy, do you know, if you sell a content for 20K, for a video or a photo, I'm just saying minimum, right? 20K, or even if you sell a content for 10K, and then you're consistent. Five content in a week is how much? That's for one brand. So if you're able to target That's 10, like 20 brand. Brand. Exactly, yeah. if you're able to target 10, 20 brand in a month, and you're consistent and you go to work hard on it, I guarantee you, you'll be making a minimum of 250K in a month. Fantastic point, fantastic point. You know. Uh, I'm very excited uh, hearing all these uh, uh, points from me right now. So, what you're saying is that this season is actually one of the, the seasons that, pro that, that, that provides more opportunities for creatives, all like you know, we are seeing it. Because, as it is, regardless of the fact that events have dropped, but the events that are, that are still ongoing are... Uh, Still being uh, taken care of by vendors that cannot go extinct. For instance, they take uh, the, the, the baker, the, the, the make the, the cake baker, the makeup artist. So we should now shift our focus to those guys. Absolutely. And begin to engage these people and provide content from them from our archives. So we don't even have, we don't even need to 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 start thinking of how to create the content. We already have them in our archives. You well, already have a portfolio. Them. You just have to bring them together and engage. Fantastic. So uh, let's 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 shift a little bit towards. Uh, I'm going to come back to the other question I have. But let let's. This has prompted something that uh, I, I actually would have uh, wanted to talk about. You know, in, on a bigger platform, like we were talking uh, to have next week Tuesday. But let's just share a little light on it. Uh, by the way, guys, everybody who is saying there will be a bigger platform. I saw someone asking a question. I think she's an event planner. She was talking about uh, how we should share some ideas uh, for under uh, event uh, entrepreneurs. So I just want to let her know that from next Tuesday, for every other person. So this was actually targeted to photographers and videographers. So by next Tuesday, that's I think May 12th. May 12th, we're going to be having a bigger platform. Yeah. Mr. My boss here, Mr. Oye, and two other, um, two other strategic entrepreneurs to share greater insight for uh, all the vendors and the photographers, of course, can also join that platform. So now, this was a question I reserved, you know, for for next week. But let me ask it now: mm. How can creative entrepreneurs take advantage of technology to grow their businesses? In this pandemic so the people that are currently getting married online are using platforms they're using technology they're using visual technology they're using streaming technology and all of that absolutely so how do photographers begin to sell those ideas to their customers because i, I was talking to one of my clients this morning uh, okay, no, it, it, uh last night about you know why he or she doesn't have to wait for the pandemic to be over all of that so in how 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 do we begin this conversation? Because it, it it's strange to the next day because we haven't been used to <laughs> we haven't been used to this. So how do we start off no. that conversation and ensure that we get results out of it? Okay. Um I, I, I run through it real quick, but please make sure you join the session for Tuesday, uh, because it'll be really great and advantageous to everybody. Um here's the thing. Like I said earlier. And please, if you can hear me right now, uh, if you forget everything that we're going to say, don't forget this one. Mm. Every season like this comes to give birth to the new. And as a matter of fact, we're now, we have even transited to the new. Some of us are catching up 
you know, with it. And part of it is also a high, um, a high pointer to this transition is technology. And, you know, for some, technology is just finding your way around Facebook, <laughs> Instagram, <laughs> Snapchat, and you can do online payments and that. Okay, right? Yeah. But yeah. there are ways that you can make money and build brands for yourself, right? Now, um, again, let's let's take for example, you know, wait, wait, let me just finish this. Uh, by you know, my 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 mom at a point, you remember when this whole online banking thing started, right? I remember this particular day I, I sent money to my mom and you know, I kept calling her if she had gotten it. And then she said, Oh, that she was at the bank. And I said, What are you doing at the bank? She says she's at the counter, she wants to collect. I said, This mom money now you want to collect for counter. <laughs> you know, and she's like, ah, no, now this online bank is you know, she no wants, you know. And it was funny, we laughed about it, right? Because my mom likes to joke. We laughed about it. But you see, years later, I remember this conversation, and then I said to myself that every transition comes, gives birth to a new set of people, and then we we'll do away with some people. That's why you find a photographer right now, you tell the photographer, learn Photoshop. He, he just can't, he didn't have a problem. You tell a photographer, create a platform for yourself. Don't just be doing, I shoot, I do photo book, I deliver, I post one picture on Instagram. And that's it, right? Now, see what's happening, right? So one of the ways you can leverage technology is basically just embracing the fact that this is not a joke. We're not going back to business as usual. So again, if you forget anything, just understand that we're not going back to business as usual. This is the new world that has come to stay. So if you're a photographer or a content creator and you're still comfortable, you know, with the life that you live and not leveraging on technology to, to leveraging simply means knowing what is obtainable globally and finding quicker ways of solving problems with it. And solving problem can simply be things like minimizing delivery time or finding ways to connect with more people, you know, without this whole thing. Look at what is happening right now. Now, you've invested so much money in buying cameras and you, you have staff who work for you every weekend and then you do weddings and stuff. Now you're, you're asking those staff to go home. You can't pay them anymore. Um, now your equipments are beginning to gather dust because there are no weddings going on and stuff. But mm. well, guess what? There's a small boy somewhere who has a business. And what is that business? This guy takes his maybe one camera or even his phone, sets up you know a platform on his laptop, and then says what? I do, I now organize, or rather, I now produce virtual weddings. So he knows how to create a platforms where you can sign up, like, they'll create, like, unique passwords to that platform, and then you can send that as a, as a digital invitation to all your family members or your guests for your wedding. And this guy will set it up. He will help you manage sending mails and pictures, uh, sending mails and login details to these people. And then when it's time, they get their reminder notification, and then they log into this stuff. That guy is the new world. You see what I mean? So that's like a typical idea. So what, for the sake of time, that's why I'm saying, guys, you need to join yeah. the Tuesday one so we can really expand on this. So what I need everybody to understand is we're, we're, we have moved into a new normal. We're not going back. Like I hear people say this, ah, man, Baba, I can't wait for this coronavirus to go or for this lockdown to be over so we can get back to our normal life, man. No, that ain't happening. There's no such thing as our normal life anymore. We have evolved. So now you people need to pay attention to what is going on globally and learning these new tricks with technology and just basically see what content creators are doing, you know, harnessing technology. A typical example I just gave with this virtual wedding stuff, you know, people are doing virtual photo exhibitions right now and people are buying into it. So that's another one you can key into. You can Google it, you can check it. So understand, guys, that 
there is no such thing as a new as as the way we did one before the normal normal no we have moved into the new one and technology is the new frontier so if you have not embraced technology completely please now's the time to check what people are doing with technology in your particular industry and begin to act on it and on tuesday we will be you know doing i, I will be talking about a lot of the digital platforms and things that you can use to sell your product increase brand uh, mileage for yourself collaborate um distribution you know all of these things we'll talk about that on tuesday next week okay so um you are you are emphasizing how are you going to go deeper, more intentional on Tuesday? Oh, yeah. Part two. Yeah. Take yeah, it from there. Yeah. No, no, next Tuesday, you know, I mean, so so that we don't we don't bore people with a lot of the technical stuff. Um, so that's why I'm encouraging everybody to, you know, join in next Tuesday. So we can talk about, so if you're a photographer, you are, you know, a videographer, you are an editor, or you have other businesses in the value chain, you know, of what we do, I will be listing out and talking about like different technologies that are obtainable right now and also different businesses that you can diversify into just harnessing technology as well. And if you're not a photographer or content creator, for sure, you can actually learn a lot by joining Tuesday session. You know why? A lot of businesses may not be able to hire um, you know, like content creators, right? So it will be great for you to know how to create some of these things yourself or use this technology to actually build for yourself, right? Or um, it is one thing to... So collaboration is one thing I'm going to emphasize on, you know, when we, when we move further, you know, how to collaborate, how to, you know, spot a potential collaborator, you know, uh, where we will be talking about personality difference, you know, what do you need to um, look out for when you're choosing someone to collaborate? Because I don't see maybe say person go collaborate with us. The collaboration or collaborate scatter a business, you know. So what are some of the things you need to learn? We'll also be talking about that. But it will be great that you know these things so that when it's time for you to collaborate with other people in helping you build your brand narrative, you will be able to know how these things work. So on Tuesday, that's what we're going to be doing. If we do that now, a lot of people might just get bored, you know, and so it would be great for us to, you know, just emphasize on that. And then for those of you who just joined back again, thank you so much. I see my guys. Uh, I see my stylist, um, Otibo. Uh, she was the one, you know, that got me the shirt. I'm looking fly today. Um, Grace Carroll. Dot Osa, I see you. Uh, you know, shout out to everybody here. Oh, oh that's your wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well done, well done, well done. Cheesy, I see you. All right, so, so let's 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 wrap up this. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, thank, thank you so much. Um, and then again, uh, what we're going to be doing on Tuesday is going to be for about three hours. Very intense, and um, Instagram has its own challenges, and so we're taking everybody to a bigger platform. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna send out the registration link. So once you start you start saying that later today or tomorrow. So once you get yes. that just register with a with the registration link and then you get a link to take you to where the live webinar will be holding on Tuesday twelfth. Uh that, that's gonna be by six PM. So by that time I believe more people will be home. So let's let's really continue. So as someone I would yes. say in the media industry. Uh, by the way, specifically when did you kick off your media career? What year? So this story is very interesting, and you know it humbles me every time I say it. I started my career right from my mama belly. <laughs> no be joke, right from my mama belly. You know I've always known that you know this was the life, and um, as as a little boy, I used to be fascinated as to how people you know how things just show up on TV. And of course, that prompted me to do a lot of on screen, cracking of screens, you know, just to figure out if people will fall. You know, see that on a Bender Broadcasting Service, you know, they, you know, like before, like TV start, you see like the color bar, you know, we never knew what that was. We just said it was rainbow or colors, you know. And after that, you have that, uh, you know, no, before the color bar, you have the, sh and TV used to start about four o'clock. 
you know, for you uh, millennials, you won't understand. Man, that 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 time was the was was the bowling, man. Uh, like TV was like like not be now if you say TV they wait you. That time I really wait TV to start. You know that time at four o'clock, we don't go sit down like this. The TV they on the wait. Made it made it start. You know, and then you have that, sh- and then you have the colors, and after the color, you know, you hear the car. What's that thing you hear after colors? I can't uh, is it uh, 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 I'll tell you about the sound. I'll tell you about the sound. Know, after the uh, colors, just give it. No, 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 no. After the colors, give it some time. What you hear is boom, 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 and then the national anthem will come. International anthem, after the national anthem, yeah, you know, you have all those people who will then show up to read all the programs for the day. So we never used to know what the yeah, yeah. you know the name, but now we know they're called continuity program, continuity program announcer, something like that. You know, now when those people you know, showed up on our own TV, one black and white TV called President. You know what I had to do that time? I go bend the TV. What are they before? Come up. I said, little boy, I go bend and push and go back, you know. <laughs> but you see, all of these things gave, you know, my parents sort of the idea that there's something about this guy. In primary school, now worry the bombing. What boy primary school now go? You know, you know, I used to like do sketches for all those primary school guests that I used to get, like all this primary school love boyfriend, you know, can he, I'll take my own exercise book, I'll do sketches of the guy, and I'll do sketches of the girl. And then I'll use, like, arrows to tell the stories, you know, like, the Cupid, you know, with the bow and the love, you know. And then I, I used to do all the sketches for girls as, as a kid, and I, I, I literally didn't like classwork, you know. So all of these rich kids, you know, now, when I say rich kids, that's the ones where we say they feel they afford one kind of life, because even my government school say, the poverty level for the school self that I still do okay, you know. So, but you see, I'll do the sketches for these girls, and then we use them to communicate all these primary school love things. And then in return, someone did they give me food during break, you know. But for me, I wasn't doing it because of those things, right? I was doing it because there was a sense of connection. I felt that thing about, you know, either preserving or interpreting stories using visuals. And then another fascinating thing that I loved doing as a kid People, my mates could take class, they study, you know. I, I'll try to reduce pigeon, you know, because I see some of my some of my American friend. I just there's a friend of mine who's in Jamaica, she just joined as well. Um now my friends will be in class. You know what I'll be doing with my exercise book, Carol? I go fold the exercise book like this, eh? I go there outside, I go to find bed. You know, birds will fly, I'll follow the bird so the bird disappears and i used to do all of this stuff to the point where and then in church i used to play drums and at the same time i used to do like video i used to be among the cameramen for two years i was rolling cables i just didn't want to touch the camera because i wanted to learn and then i did that for for a long time in worry and then i knew i had a vision of the kind of things i wanted to be the kind of things i wanted to do you know, and I was so passionate about social impact. I was so passionate about telling the African story from a place of strength. You know, growing up, even as a young boy, I never liked how the West told stories of Africa. It was kind of like our stories were defined by flies on babies' faces, kwashoko babies, and things. And then when I see those images, when I used to see those images, I would look myself and say, well, I don't get kwashoko. Fly on a demon face. Why is it that every time these people want to tell stories about Africa, you would always find this? Or best case scenario, they'll show you Kenya, show you giraffe, and show you all of this stuff, right? And show you the jungle. So I always said to myself that, man, see, when I start doing like proper, proper projects, like I really want to tell Nigerian story, African story to inspire the world, to say this is truly who we are. No disrespect to whatever you say, we are, but this is truly who we are. And that's why today, when people look at my work and say, man, your work inspires me, I'm like, well, that's why I started, you know? And the truth is this, I feel a high sense of calling. Um, so, and this has always happened, like, right from, you know, the early days growing up in Marie, you know, right from when I was, like, 14 years old, you know, and things. And then I transited to Lagos. Uh, I joined uh, a production company, 
and I was just an assistant. My work, to, my work was just to clean equipment, load truck. I did that for years. And, you know, at that time, we, I was part of the people who produced the likes of the Your Choice Dating Game Show, Love Venture Dating Game Show, and a couple of other shows on TVS at that time. And I was just the guy behind the scene. I never touched the camera. I never, you know, I used to look at all these cameramen that time, like, you know, but I was so focused on... <laughs> Yeah, I used to see them as gods, man. I, I gave them the respect. But guess what? I was so focused on the responsibilities given to me as at that time. And that's what I tell a lot of people that I mentor now, that CM. Yeah, you see, all of these technologies that now comes to replace, you know, process, right? All of that is great. But yeah. understand that, look, the process to growth, right? You have to experience it for yourself so that the day they take technology away from you, you can still survive pending when the technology gets back into your hands. And that's why when people ask me now, you know, the pandemic, you're still working, you're still doing stuff, you're still happy, you're still getting stuff going. And I say to them that I see, I know what's going on in the world. And as a matter of fact, oh, wait, you know, somebody just joined. Bankuli. Now you see Bankuli. Bankuli. See, see, now you see Bankuli. This is this is like we, you know, a mom to us. This is very spiritual. Yeah. This very moment, I just talked about how I used to work in a place called AV.com, and all I did was clean camera, clean the studio. I used to watch the cars of a guy called Dapo Ojo, who was like the big guy then, and I was doing these things not because people told me to do them. I found a place that I said, God, man, this is everything I just wanted to do. Right next to all there's an audio studio where um, Bakuli used to be. And then there's like another small video studio there. And then we had our small store. And as far as I was concerned, the only thing I wanted to do was serve these guys. I used to buy food from one potato joints. And I used to buy it from Iowa, Louis Bar, you know, um, you know, all of these guys. Now, you see. This process, these things that I experienced, these are like my university. These are the things that that have formed the core of who I am today, that I am 100% fearless. No, if, like this pandemic lasts for 10 years, it can't last for 10 years. I will remain fearless and highly productive. You know why? Yeah. Because I have built a reputation from nothing, from lack to a point where, you know, I'm able to share this experience. What I'm trying to say is this, in essence, is, guys, understand that everything you are going through right now, in either whatever level that you are, whether you're at the bottom, you're mid, you're at the top, understand that these things, they're simply happening right now to ask you one question. Are you prepared for the future? Are you prepared for that thing that you're praying for? Because when it comes, you can all use old tactics, to address, you know, these bigger opportunities that will come. Hey, man, you know, I, I can go on and on and on and on, you know, about, about, about my, my, my price paying days. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, very quickly, uh, our viewers, uh, just let me drop your questions. As many people have questions. I already have some. Some questions have been dropping yeah. questions so far. Just let me drop them so we can clear up. Tuesday is a bigger platform. Tuesday is three hours. Tuesday three hours. is... Three, three hours of very, very, very powerful conversations. Uh, somebody asked, who are your mentors? Huh? Somebody is asking, who are your mentors? Who are your mentors? Who are the people that you would say, you know, they mentor you or you'd like a lot from as, as, as mentors? All right, so here's the thing. Mentorship is very tricky. And... Um, I don't, I don't see myself only as a content creator, you know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur and a lot of what I do, you know, I try to make sure that it cuts across, you know, different industry because that's the only way you can be this robust. That's, um, the, the one critical way you can be sustainable, you know, in such a way that your business cannot just, your, your business, uh, you know, doesn't just service just one line of, of um, uh, people who call for your service, right? Now, um, so I try to have mentors from different industries, you know, so in, in the, you know, I have a top mentor today who is, you know, a Lieutenant Connell. It's going to be a general very soon, by the grace of God, you know, and he mentors me in, you know, on strategies, tactics, 
you know, the resilience, how you do not fight battles with your hands, starting with, you fight battles with your mind. The one you can defeat in your mind, you can defeat it. And this guy is so calm, very quiet, very unassuming, and things. And then he teaches me a high level of humility. His name is Cornel Bassi. Now, I'm, I'm going to make reference because I want to believe that whoever is asking this question, you're not asking the question because you want to go and follow my mentors, right? The idea is to establish mentors that work for you. Now, I see people today, they just follow somebody on Instagram, the next thing they call the person mentor. No. Understand that mentors are people who hold your hands through a process and they bring value. You must bring a value as well. People come to me and say, mentor me. And I, and I say, what do you have? And they say, I have nothing. Some don't even tell you I have nothing. You can tell that you don't have anything. You know, so I have a mentor, you know, different fields. Um, in the legal world, I have a mentor, um, the Shea Akimumi, who is a barrister. Um, in, in content creation, production, I have, Chase, that is, I have a Chase Jarvis. Chase Jarvis represents the... Um, um, the kind of things that I really want to do, you know, in terms of that broader perspective to content creation, in terms of using that as a model, you know, to give um, value to people. You know, so Chase Jarvis, you can follow him. He's a great guy. He's got, like, fantastic podcasts going on. And also different mentors in different fields. So my encouragement is when you do, when you do want to get mentors, identify the different things that you really want to do in life and get mentors in, the, in these different areas, you know, and, and stuff, yeah. But fantastic, Paul. I, I, as you we were talking, I remember one time you were in Benin and I asked you, I'll drive you to the airport uh, mm. when you're leaving. And, uh, Thank you for you know, that. <laughs> there was something that happened previously and you were giving me an advice, you know, yeah. about, and it, it has to do with uh, uh, branding, you know, the people that work for me, and helping yes. them to become brands by themselves. You know, like I can never forget that because it kind of uh, it created a shift that opened my mind to realize that these people are beyond workers, you know. Whatever experiences they have with me as, as, uh, as the business owner is going to stay with them for life, beyond the salary I pay them, uh, beyond, the, beyond the orders I keep them to deliver on A, B, and C. But the, the path of relationship where I have to share advice, intentional advice, where I have to have intentional conversations, and sometimes you have to give advice that to the layman may be contrary to your own business model. You know, imagine, yes. for instance, you are, you are encouraging yourself to start a business. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, come on, if you start a business, yes, I said, we leave you. <laughs> you know, that's the normal mindset. You know, but it takes a higher perspective, you know, to be able to get to that level and see that this is a family and you are like a father to them. I can never forget that advice. And that, that was the day I made up my mind that you're going to be uh, one of my mentors for life. So uh, somebody asked this question, which is, which is why I brought up this story. He said, uh, why do successful creatives find it difficult to carry the young and upcoming creatives along? Okay. Um... First of all, I think that's a lie, or, or rather, I, I, that's not 100% true. Maybe that is some kind of truth within the community that this person resides. Maybe he's in an industry or a community or environment where the people that he sees who are doing stuff bigger than him are people who are holding information, right? It happened to me when I was growing up. Um, in the business. When I first moved to Lagos, there was a studio at Ikeja GRA owned by uh, uh, Dr. Bayo. Um, and then the first time I went into that studio, um, I visited because I was invited by an editor, the producer of um, uh, Big Brother, you know, um, Coyote was a very good friend of mine. Um, he invited me. Then we're all still coming up at a point. He was like, senior to me, you know, so he invited me just to come see, you know, just in case I want to do stuff, just to, you know, and I went there and I entered the studio and there was this guy who was setting up for a glow commercial and I entered and yo, man, I was, that was the first time of seeing like huge lights everywhere and things and, you know, I could, I just could not hide the fascination and then this guy was up there setting up lights, the director of photography, it was the day before their own commercial, this guy looked down and said, who are you? 
I said, oh, no, I just came to visit somebody and I just thought I'd just, you know, see what you guys. I said, eh, eh, I'm setting up, go outside. And I was like, whoa, wow. He was like, yeah, go outside, you know. Stayed with me for a long time. I was like, that's what they do for Lagos, you know. But I said that, nah, that that's not mm. me, you know, because I was born in an environment where there wasn't that much opportunity. So you know, you know what it is growing up in worry, right? Now, so the thing is, this it's it's true that people might hoard information, right? But you see, anybody you see doing that. That person is suffering from a syndrome that I call poverty mentality. Do not seek, or you can find a meticulous way of copying or learning from that person. But don't, 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 don't be too hard on the fact that anybody, you know. So that's why I'm saying that that isn't true because I can speak for myself. My life is built on sharing information, and I think a high level of my growth is um, a high level of my growth comes from me being able to network with other people, not just in my environment, across the continent of Africa. I share information every day. If you go to my Facebook page, my Instagram page, Twitter, that's exactly what I do every single day because I feel it's a calling. Because my mother taught me something. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Even when I bless people, when God used me to bless people, you know, I always give them an instruction. And I tell them that you can decide to follow it or not follow it. To. You see this thing eh, that I've given you? Remove small and give somebody, surprise somebody. You know, because wealth lies in this process. So that's not completely true that successful creative people don't carry people, don't carry others along. I think you're looking at the wrong guy. So stop looking at that guy that is holding information from you. That guy is suffering from poverty mentality and that guy is going to face out very soon, I guarantee you. Find people like yourself, Carol, like people who are actually every day sharing stuff and then just going back. So I'll close with this on this thing you just talked about. Now, you see, I have a business model and I'll share it. My business model is this. I hate that word staff. I don't call people staff. I call them colleagues. You know why I call them colleagues? Because... The goal, eh, and I think this is what Africa needs, the idea of capitalism is counterproductive to who we are as Africans. As Africans, we naturally coexist. It's a natural thing for us. Like, I travel to Benin, I'm in a strange village, and the next thing everybody is saying, ah, yeah, 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 nah, he's new, he's not, he's not, you know, he's new to this place, da, 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 da. and everybody wants to help you, you know. That's a natural occurrence as Africans, right? So listen, when you have businesses, you have ideas. The one way to sustain this business, sustain ideas or sustain the brand is invest in people. Because when you begin to give birth with the little that you have, these guys are going to run with the seeds. And then 10, 15, 20 years from now, these guys are going to come back to bless you. It's a simple logic. And that's why it's, it's, you know, it's the same way when people say, borrow me money. I don't know how to borrow people money. So what is the problem? You say, Baba, you know, I, need, I need 10 naira. You know what I'll tell you? Mark you, I'll dash you one naira. Eh? Go and find the other ones. You know why? Because that one that I have given to you, you are not indebted to me in any way. Do you understand what I mean? So from that one that I've given to you, that seed does not need your permission to activate the universe or activate God to bless me. It does not need your permission. It does not need my permission. So please, again, if you're with someone who is hoarding information from you, you're looking at the wrong guy. Find new sets of people and you yourself, don't go and follow that guy. Because some people here, eh, when God only bless them, of course, see, you know, not so they suffer me. Eh, I will suffer there too now. Not trying. Not trying. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Uh, we're, 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 we're coming to, gradually coming to the end of this right now. In the next 10 minutes, you'll be out of here. And I just want yeah. to quickly wrap, uh, take, uh, give a quick wrap of everything you talked about so far. Uh, you talked about uh, to always pause yeah. and ask ourselves, what is this pandemic teaching us? You know, as individuals in the creative industry, Absolutely. you need to pause and ask yourself, uh, what, is, what, what is this pandemic teaching me? 
And then always realize that every challenge happening now is preparing you for the future. Absolutely. And you have to experience the good process to solidify your brand. And yeah. one of the key things yeah. I hear today is uh, you said that you said that uh, you are as good as your last job, as the last job you your last job. So Absolutely. You are paying it forward. You, every every new job, every new job creates a different opportunity for you to uh, do better than the previous. Fantastic words from you, sir. Uh, there are so many questions, but I think some of the questions coming in where people just join because you have answered some of them, you know, earlier in the conversation. And if somebody is asking, how do I transition from vlogging, uh, okay, from just being a photographer to, to vlogging? Uh, I think uh, <laughs> yeah. today because we're talking about, we're start talking about platforms right now, this, this conversation will not end. So on Tuesday by 6 p.m., Tuesday 12, by 6 p.m., you want to say something? Can I, just, can I just drop something quickly for this person? Right. Um, so, because this question, and why, why I feel we should respond to this one now, I don't think it's just this person. A lot of people are struggling with this right now. And just doing, just turning on the camera and facing okay. yourself. That's like, it's like, uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, but, but here's the thing. Yeah, here's the thing. I don't here's know. The thing. Yeah. yeah, here's the thing. Please. Anybody who's suffering from that, just understand that it is very normal. It is okay. That feeling is normal. It's you're not a terrible person. You're not insecure. It is normal. Even the top vloggers, for every time they have to turn the camera and just record a vlog to just talk about their stuff, it gets a little clumsy and gets a little crazy. But understand something that look, um, the the the. The idea of brand consumption right now is changing. People no longer respond to products based on just the look. People respond to products with a little bit of storytelling. People want to feel like, I know the idea behind this product. I know the idea behind this brand. I connect to the person doing this. I connect to the people doing that. So understand that if we are making these changes into consumption of products and brand, then it's okay for you to put yourself out there, right? And it's 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 okay. And, and sometimes, you know, you know, the, the whole I'm gonna get dressed, put on the makeup, blah blah blah. Stop. Maybe you're focusing on a lot of successful vloggers who have built a high career for themselves and then you're trying to measure up your startup level with where they are right now that you will never start so stop worrying about you know how you look you know stop just turn the goddamn camera and just say what's on your mind that's all you know and the truth is this with every vlog you do with every recording you do it gets better with with every second, every day, every minute, and stuff. So it's okay to feel a little bit, eh, you know, it's okay, you know, but just keep doing it, keep doing it, and with time, you begin to see that you get comfortable, people love it, and then listen, your truth is always your truth. There is no second you. So don't even say, oh, there are a lot of people doing this in my industry right now. Understand that there's no second you, so turn the camera to yourself and give yourself to the world. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, just a quick one on Tuesday for those that have been asking by 6 p.m. We want to be sending out the link and the e flyers where you're going to register because we're not doing an Instagram. We're moving yeah. everybody to a bigger platform. We, we hope to have about, about 500 people, you know, hopefully that will participate yeah. because it's going to be broader. It's going to be for photographers, uh, videographers, uh, video directors, mm. decor parties, event, event, event planners. Every person in the creative industry is going to be brought yeah. to I'm going to be having my boss again. Uh, so I'm going to join us too. You're going to get deeper into everything we've done today. And we're going to be sharing more practical tools that you can start up with. I want to be having Sir John Sinabali. You can Google John Sinabali. John Sinabali, find out about him. And then we're going to be having David, David Mesa, David Larry Mesa. You're going to see the flyers are flying from tonight or tomorrow morning, hopefully. So, sir, uh, let's close up with this one. Uh, what is the importance of self-development as an entrepreneur? That's a question from one of our from one of our viewers right now. What is the importance of self-development as an entrepreneur? Self-development is very key. Um, you know, even though I feel self-development to a certain degree is a scam. Um, you know, and that might be a little big for some people to take in, but don't worry about that. You know, this is just my personal opinion, and I'll explain. 
why are you spending so much time focusing on the idea of self-development when all the people are getting stuff done with the crap that they have going on with them? So why you think about self-development? Here's what I please ask you to do. Just start. Do that thing that you want to do. Just get up and go. Just do that. Three, two, one. Boom. Hit the road running. You know, you fall, you stumble a couple of times. You see, in that process, you're going to start learning stuff. You know, we have a lot of people who are consuming podcasts right now. They're reading tons of books. They're watching tons of tutorials. But they're not putting out any content. Any content. They're not putting out any content. I'm telling yeah. you. See, yeah. listen. Listening to a lot of podcasts. Yeah, okay. Listening to, you know, watching a lot of tutorials video. That will not do the work. That will never do the work until you do the work. It's just like, you know, I'm a Christian, right? And I, and I believe that people in every other religion, like my, my brothers and sisters, you know, they're uh, Muslims can actually attest to this, you know. You know the scriptures is different from actually activating this thing to work for you. This isn't me. I'm not a very, you know, out there speaking tongues every two seconds kind of guy. But listen, you know, I understand a simple trick. And it's not a trick, it's common sense. And guess what? I learned this thing eh, from the late Archbishop Benson in Daosa. I this thing is more picking that time. My mom went for convention. And I she because my mom eh, went to the go for convention, they pack everybody. But I'm not sleep on that chair, not concerned. I must go with the vitals. Eh. So the, the late Archbishop was actually preaching, and then he said, God give God God gave you brain so you can give him rest. And then there was this other thing, this video I saw where he did this uh, philosophy about, you know, somebody, you know, had a cup, you know, and then it was water. And the person, the person said, oh, I'm thirsty. And then started speaking in tongues. They called the cup, you know, you know, was calling the cup to come. You know, you don't flip your camera. Out. <laughs> you know, was calling the cup to come. But guess what? Another guy who no understand the scripture just came, said, you know what? I'm thirsty. Oh, that's a cup of water grab the cup, and then go. Who gets sense? So understand that personal development is great. The whole idea of, you know, listening, finding your problems, you know, the things that you're not good at, and looking for ways to make it better by reading books or having conversation and da 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 But all of these things will not work until you get up and go. Just do it. While you're doing personal development, other people are eating, you know? So personal development is important, but please... Get up and do it. If you want to shoot, get just shoot. Get up and do it. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, it just it just reminds me of my slogan uh, 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 as a person, which is uh, "Let it be on record." My 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 personal slogan is is that yeah. "Let it be on record that you tried and failed, that yeah. you never did." You know, yeah. let it be on record that you tried and you failed, that you never yeah. did at all, that you never tried at all. So just do it. Everybody, thank you so much. Uh, we've had an average of 65 people so far today. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope to see everyone on Tuesday. And I'd like everybody to invite more people. Uh, the flyers, the e flyers are going to be dropping uh, pretty much soon. On uh, Tuesday by 6 p.m., we'll send out the registration link for you, for you to register so we can send you the, the platform that we're using you know, directly through your emails. Uh, the emails that you'll be dropping on the registration link. So thank yeah. you, everybody. I believe everyone has had uh, so much fun. Please, uh, if you know this has been an impactful session for you, I'd like to see your comments right now. Say thank you to Mr. Oye uh, for spending some time with us. You've given us pretty much about one hour. Thank you very much. Already. Thank you very so much. much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So uh, viewers, viewers, let's say thank you to Sir Oye very quickly. All Thank right. You. Thank now, you so now, as 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 you guys Thank say, you. as you guys say, <laughs> as you guys say, you're too many thank yous. I just want to say, uh, I'm just going to close with this by saying that look, guys, um, it's it's like we did establish at the very beginning, such a trying time, but understand that you know we're alive for a reason. So focus on that. And the one thing I'm going to encourage everybody to do is believe in yourself. Self confidence, self belief is very important yeah. right now. Have great faith, have great confidence in yourself. And then please understand that times like this only comes to ask you one question. For those of you that missed this at the beginning, the time right now is asking you are you prepared 
for the future. You know, I have a, I have a system that works for me, which is this. I invest in people and I also look at areas that I'm not good at and I look for people who are good at it and then I collaborate with them and network with them. Now is the time to build healthy relationship. Check your circle. If you have friends that you chat with all the time and don't feed you, you need to do away with those people and find new circle of people that feed where you're going. So understand that this pandemic will come and it will go. But guess what? It will bring good tidings for all of us. So please stay safe and uh, just just make sure that you're productive every day. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, remember uh, to always expect better wherever you do. Rest don't, forget to to you. don't forget to save the video. Don't forget to save it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Sure, sure. The video is recorded. I'll send it over to you. And uh, I'll, I'll drop this video on our YouTube channel, Optimist, uh, Optimist TV Network. So if you want a replay of the video, you want to share it with folks who could dominate their, their Instagram live, uh, pretty much soon, let's say uh, before the end of the day, I'll, I'll, I'll share the video to our YouTube channel, Optimist TV Network. Optimist TV Network. You know, you're going to find the video, the video there of this conversation. Thank you so much, boss. I appreciate you a lot. All right. We'll see you again on Tuesday as we delve deeper into this conversation. God bless you so much. Bye, everybody. <laughs> 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 <laughs>